Good afternoon and welcome back to Altenstein. I just put the help menu back on. We'll make a state. I don't know if that's all we're going to get out of that 60,000 silage, 18,500. We'll check back in a little while, but that'll be useful. That'll save us a little bit of money on the fertilizer. The sunflowers are ready to harvest. Not looking quite as pretty as they did this morning. This field of corn we are going to turn into chaff today. We have this field of barley to harvest. And we have the fields at the top end of the farm ready to plant into. So we shall get the harvester going. I'm going to make a point of staying in the harvester because it is very noisy, I know. There we go. I'll let the worker get on with that now. The boucher needs to go and collect some grass, I think. I'm still thinking about this, whether we might just bale it or whether we should put it all into the silage um, bunker. We're going to chaff that field first and then decide. Right, we have this much wheat. We are going to go and sell it at Mary's farm. She still has a good, great demand price on. It's a little bit of a load for the, the small Massey Ferguson, but he can make it. And we're just getting into Mary's farm. It can be a little bit tricky to get your trailer into this cell point. You've got to get right in this corner before it will trigger. In fact, it won't because this needs to come in from the other side. Here we go. There we are. Thank you very much, Mary. We definitely intend to buy one field every day. We rolled out of the cell, po cell point there. We'll try and get back in it now. We're going to try and buy a field a day, and obviously, as the field the farm gets bigger, the income increases. We can make those fields a day, the bigger fields. We'll start off with the smaller ones. So on that end, we're going to have a look up on Simon's field, see if we can do another job. We need to get the Massey Ferguson out sowing. We've got a field of barley to harvest ready over here. And uh, we need to get the troops moving. So let's get on with that, shall we? Popped over to see our friend Simon Collins, and uh, he's asked us to plough up this field that withered. It's a 16-minute job, probably takes a little bit less. Um, obviously I'm going to make you watch me do all this. Do bear in mind though that when you're doing these longer jobs you can't flick over to your staff if you've got hard workers. So the harvester's having a break between fields. The seed is seeding. You can't really go wrong. And we're going to get on with this job. Now I'm particularly interested in having a go in Simon's <laughs> tractor. This Fiat Agri. 180 90 it's about 160 horsepower um now when we bought all his fields off of him he's not gonna have any need for a tractor and this is quite an interesting prospect possibly anyway the plow <laughs> has done what that plow sometimes does i think i warned you in another episode and it's kind of wobbled over so we're gonna have to waste a little bit of time getting him on Luckily, Farm Simulator Physics will take care of the rest. And I shall start ploughing. This is going to take a wee while, isn't it? I shall see you soon. I do quite like this tractor, though. See what Grandpa thinks of it. Oh, yes. It's quite nice and zippy. There is a Fiat Agri crawler, um, similar to the, the Fiat, in fact. Probably just a newer version of the Fiat that we had to send off to the museum due to that mysterious incident with the steel girder and the wood. Um, I've actually tried that out and it seems to have some weird traction issue. I'm not sure if it's the ground response mod, but that kind of slides and slips around a bit, especially when it's going downhill. So um, it's not really something I want to be using. Anyway, I shall get on with this clock is ticking. I think we've nearly done a 
good enough job here. We might just have to... Oh, no, there we go. That's nice of him. Six thousand, nearly seven hundred dollars. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Simon. And I did enjoy your tractor. Right. The small magsy is on bail tidying up duty. The Deutz is going to do the bailing because the Massey 600, who we should really go and check on, is seeding on the other end of the farm. So we'll just get this guy parked up over here. And we'll see. Yes, you finished over here. We're going to just do soy in all of the fields around this back end of the farm. manually if you can see over there the guy that did the cultivating in the lintner um, got a little bit carried away he actually cultivated an area of land just next to what was the field um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that actually you see where I'm in mean, the area just over there We may as well seed it, I suppose. But anyway, let's get on with this bailing. There we are. And the Deutz can handle this pretty well. Although he is full. Where should we put this bale? And here we are, we're just getting on with the bailing. This Deutz, I just wanted to say, you know, it is a great little tractor. It's $20,000 this cost. It's rated at 75 horsepower. Um, I don't think there's any reason, unless you're really anti-old equipment, why most farms shouldn't have one of these. They're quite handy, even if it's just for getting stuff around the farm. The limitation on performance, as I've said, really is their lack of a front weight. Um, but no, they can do a lot of jobs and for the money the maintenance costs are very low as well in fact we're just going to pull around here because what I haven't ever really done is go through the shop listings for the equipment that we've got here and I know some of you are very keen to know such things so we'll just drop the bale I'm doing this gently in the hope none of them are rolled away and go into the river and also making sure I don't bash any of them. Let's have a little look in the shop. So, the classics pack, farming classics as it's now known, is all in one group. Starts off with this Gouldner, there's also a front loader version um, which has a tiny bucket, that is the vehicle I first ever mixed, uh, mixed rations with, it took ages. Uh, there's the Brewer, and this small boucher you can see the prices you can see the maintenance figures they're tiny tractors tiny horsepowers but they're there i really like them you can do a lot with them there's our mighty deutz the hurleyman rated at 55 horsepower i don't know we'll try that one at some stage i'm sure grandpa's going to expand his collection the schlurter we're not going to be using on this map we have got one over in sosnovka which we're enjoying very much so they're the classic pack tractors and they're a very fine selection. Okay, the baling's done. And the Deutz is returned to slurrying. We're going to start harvesting these sunflowers. We put the header on. Um, I'll tweak the volumes again, so hopefully that frost it wasn't just too noisy. Internally, it's a little bit quieter, so we'll just stay in here. Not quite getting to the edge. And we'll ring this field and leave the worker to finish it. We'll pack the bales up using the little Massey. The Massey 600 doing the seeding is flying around with his five meter whip. Oh, these corners are so tight. These fences are so tangly. Do be careful of them. The baler seems to really, there's a small wheel on the side of the baler. If that gets caught into anything, then you're kind of a little bit stuck sometimes. Be careful around the fences, those barbed wire fences. Um, as I was saying, the Massey with his 5 meter cedar is, is catching up quite nicely. So we've got quite a good situation in that the, the piece of machinery that goes first, this harvester, 
keeps a good pace and gets ahead. Um, the guy is doing the cultivating and the fertilizing do get a little bit interrupted. I think I'm still missing a little bit there. Do get a little bit interrupted, especially when there's baling going on. That needs to be done manually, obviously. But that's okay, because they can get on at their own pace. And then having the quick seeder, or comparatively quick seeder, to be realistic, um, to whiz and kind of catch up behind them. It means it all kind of works, basically, is the point I'm getting to. So not long needs to pass before the Massey is going to be free. Um, and this is a limitation we've got at the moment. The Massey is 90 eight horsepower maybe 95 and uh we're really kind of pushing the limits i think there's certainly jobs that we're going to need more, more horsepower for and i think it would be handy to have another tractor that is capable of doing sort of the any job that it needs to turn its hand to the hats we are going to get a small cedar for it when we're next down at the shop um so that if he is sit around doing nothing he can at least sort of help out and us um why grandpa's collection of small equipment is quite handy might not be the most practical but then you've got situations where you can get some work done whereas without it there'd be none right we should be fine now to get this guy lined back up this way and leave the work to it I, am i going to hit the fence no there we go right go so here we are the Massey. we did nip out with the doits and fertilize this field before we planted it so he's now going around to field 18 and then 16 and 13. He'll be back in the farmyard in no time and the Deutsch is going to come around and do the fertiliser on the uh, planted fields. So the system is basically very much there. Next time we're in the yard we'll take this forestry cage off actually. Make use of the workshop we've got. I mean, even if you own mods, if you do chop and change at all, if you go and do it at the dealer's workshop, you get charged a thousand dollars, you know, for, for changing what you've got on. If you've got the workshop in your farmyard, you bought the placeable workshop or the toolboxes, then you can save yourself a thousand dollars every time. We did miss a little bit with the cultivator though, which to be honest, I didn't notice. Um, I'm not going to bring him back to do that. It might actually help just to have a little buffer around the bottom of the field. We shall see. Right, we just brought the barley from field four back up to the silo. We're just going to give the animals their lunchtime clean up. And it is something to keep an eye on. It certainly can affect your income. I got very caught out on a Soznoka episode. We're getting way too busy. Now this smaller bucket I got, I don't know if it is really that much smaller. It's smaller capacity, which is fine for in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this internally because I really haven't got the sense for quite where the bucket is yet. Ah, there we go, we've got some grass. Maybe I can. There you go. Um, it just feels a little bit smaller. It's quite a tight area here. Also depends on uh, the vehicle that you bring in. This little tractor solution is definitely the best that I've found other options are available of course am I still picking up yes I am now, it will take a little while as we'll see in a moment for the cleanliness to change on your animal screen that's simply because the simulation kind of ticks with regards to the animals and next time it ticks it will resolve that issue and make it more accurate right that's all done so we can feed that straight back to them there we go and now we'll get around and get the pigs and this tractor hopefully i'm going to be proved horribly wrong that's where i hit the wall if i hit now i'll hit the wall again <laughs> depth perception is really hard for me using the front loaders there we go we're through hello pigs Pigs make much, seem to make much less mess. I mean, there's less of them, I guess, but but the percentage is what counts. There can be actually a very tiny little bit of mess here, but it's still counting as a percentage relative to the number of animals that you've got. So uh, there you go. That's all of that. Don't be too stingy with your cleaning up. Right, we're going to get the trailer back around to the harvester because he needs emptying. We want to crack on 
of getting the sunflowers harvested because there's quite a good price today but it is going down we'll have a little look in a moment right we'll get this guy oh we get a little glitch sometime when we hitch it's okay if you're ready for it it's fine honestly right so we'll bring this guy back round the Deutz has fertilised the fields up here that it can fertilise for the first time so the cultivator can get on and I have decided the Hatz is going to grab a small seeder even though the mass is making small progress uh, good progress sorry uh, I think it'll be for a small amount of money quite a good investment to keep things busy right we'll get around under the harvester did I leave his pipe out? nope but we know where it is right about here lovely and then on to the Deutz and the Deutz is empty so we can make use of the new facility we found ourselves did I just stop the engine? Silly me. Um, we can pick up some slurry from the biogas plant. It's not a huge amount. It's not worth a huge amount. But it saves us a bit of toing and throwing potentially. And we'll see how the whole silage thing goes. Doesn't this field look quite big? Simon's field now that we ploughed it out. This field of corn here, I think today we're going to chaff. Now I'm not sure whether fertilising fields makes a difference to their chaff production. So perhaps we'll find out. It is fully fertilised today. We'll see how much chaff we get out. And obviously it's convenient then. Right, we've got 18,000 in there, which is probably only about $400 worth. Guessing from the prices that we've been paying to refill elsewhere. I could, of course, just set the worker to automatically refill from here. Or indeed the pigs or the animals. Um, but on the subject of the animals, as you'll see, the pigs make very small amounts of liquid manure and manure compared to cows um, so if you want to produce manure you want cows they're all very happy six days pretty much on everything give or take the odd bale here and they might actually need to move that water tanker soon too but my point is we're having now seen how we're sort of playing this the bale straw uh, cell point is just over there next next to Wright's agribusiness but not part of it so if we're going to produce bales that we're going to sell we might as well produce them over here and save a bit of driving around the bga the biogas plant is right here so if we're going to make chaff we want to kind of make it over here again just to save on the driving around so if we look to make this side of the farm basically focused on those two things and then the fields elsewhere, we can vary the crops day to day, try to get, um, keep ahead of the market. I think that is going to be our plan. And um, I wish, one thing I wish we could do is take the fence, this fence away. But we can't, so we'll just have to remember it's there, because I do bash into it quite a lot, especially if I am zoomed out. Actually, we, this isn't planted, so I can drive across it legally. And we'll see how well we can get this lined back up from this view, shall we? I'm actually spending much more time in the tractors in this playthrough, I'm sure you've noticed, and I usually do, and I seem to be kind of getting the hang of it. Right, work it, go. Perfect, look at that. Right, next job. Let's get this harvester going. Worker sees block by an object. Oh, it's me. Right, pipe in. If we just do have a quick look, while I think to the price there on the sunflowers, 727 seems very good, but it is on the way down. So we want to get these harvested as quickly as we can. I don't think it's going to take too long. Denton Bakery, we actually went to in the lost footage. It's over in town, so that'll give me another good excuse to show you around a little bit up there too and then we've got to decide what we're going to spend this money on right, I'm going to do my usual just around the edge keep him away from the river I have found out and I'm pleased that if bales do roll into the river they don't suffer any horrible consequences even in seasons 
I thought they might dissolve, but they don't. Right, once we've done this, I think we can let him go. Well, I don't know, we haven't tried this, but there's one piece of corn left there. What's he going to do when he gets there? Here's something I didn't know. If you look down bottom right, you'll see um, the tanker is full of... It's got a different icon for um, digestate from the BGA. Um, it's counting that as not slurry, a completely different substance. Therefore, I was just going to top up on the way past here to go up to the top fields that have been seeded. Um, I can't top up here. It counts as a different substance completely. So now we know. Okay, we brought the Massey down here to reload on seed. Um, seemed the quickest remedy. So we shall get him a little bit closer to the bag. And leave him to fill. We brought the hats down. We're going to go in the shop. We're going to look in sewing machines. And we're going to buy this splan splendid Hassia FS Cedar. Two meter width. It costs $2,750. It costs pennies to maintain a day, well, ten dollars. Um, the hats can more than handle it. Twenty horsepower requirement only holds a hundred liters. It's not going to be going far from the farm, so uh, it just seems a way of keeping that hat busy. So we are going to buy that. Something you did miss in the missing footage that was actually of some relevance was that I did do an experiment of filling up the two-row planter at the fill point in the farmyard um, and it costs three times more to use that fill point than it does to come down here and buy a bag of seed so that's why we never use the farmyard fill points on any map right let me close your cover we'll get this guy back up to the farm We'll use the little cut through because it seems appropriate. And we can get him straight on the field up here. When his friend, of course, has cultivated it, which is what we need to get organised over here now. Here's the Lidna. He's ready to go. So we're back in the Massey. We're going to cut through town. We'll stop and have a little look around when we come to Denton Bakery at some of the detail in town. It's very nice and busy. Busy enough for us. Luckily the traffic has calmed down. Dogface, make me one of those trucks, please. Like that one, see, I'm being haunted by them. Oh, come on. There you go. Oh, my word. It's truck hour. Happens around where I live, actually. There's a couple of uh, big recycling plants and a quarry not far from here. So at certain times of the day... There are some very big muck wagons, as we call them, trundling around the roads, the little country lanes around here. It can be quite surprising sometimes. Right, this is the corner of the uh, map we've not been to at all. I'm going to switch to the external view, just so we can see a little bit better. This planted area, well planted grass, is ours, this meadow. And all of the fields on this side of the road, of the main road, belong to Richard Wright as we know this is where you could do or we shall do I'm sure at some stage some slightly more commercial forestry operations but certainly our priority is to tidy up the woods on the farm and there's this small area here, here which has no um, real purpose like a little old abandoned house with a little garden I guess we could take it if we wanted to and here we are, we're actually on the corner of field 16. That was another half lap of the map and it's a call of two minutes. So let's get this guy back to work. Up here, more soy. Just come back to check on the harvester, thinking he might need emptying. And he's, um, yeah, he's negotiated these fields in a very odd way. I sent him along the bottom of the field, along the river, and then for some reason he's come back all the way down the field that way to that bottom corner two or three times then he's cut round into the bottom of this field very odd okay <laughs> we might bear that in mind going forward in terms of how we lay these fields out crop wise that's that's quite an odd one or at least know that we need to maybe help him make that first turn 
back along that bottom field, but not to worry. I think, again, you missed my explanation that the, the staff on the farm, we do have a high wage bill, but we don't mind. Um, the guys that come and help us on the farm are all the students from the local state agricultural college. They come and learn. And uh, they do a very nice job for us. We're very pleased and it's good for them to get on this simple stuff, simple equipment, learn the basics and move on. So we're never going to worry about our wage bill on this farm. That is the point there. And let's just see if we can do a little bit of this field unsupervised. No, don't like that field at all. I'm guessing it's maybe the fences, I don't know. As I said, I really wish they were removable. I hope the sound level is much better now. I have checked back on some of the footage I've recorded. I know I got drowned out in the last episode a couple of times by this monster. So apologies for that. I'm not quite sure why the Elgato recorded at completely different levels on a different PC because all the settings like the dial was all set exactly the same but there you go you live and learn I think we're on top of it now right that's that patch done yeah it's really quite let's see let's see if we can figure out what he's done down here he's come along the bottom of the field now he wouldn't have gone around there so is he he's turned around and gone to there and then turned around and come back again it's one of these weird proximity issues very strange. Can he make it along this road now? Let's see. No. He won't go that way. If you keep trying to hire the worker, you can kind of figure out what the issue is. And it's either that tree or, again, that demon fence. I think that fence has a lot to answer for. Oh well, it's manageable. Right, we've got the 8,351 litres of sunflowers which we need to rush and sell I'm just dropping these arms off there's no way I'm messing around with Altenstein town centre traffic with front loader arms on we'll leave them right here shall we oh, a bit tangled up are we okay. it's okay it's okay nothing to see nothing to see and off we go to Denton Bakery. Bit of a heavy load for this little chap. Let's calm him down. There we go. Nothing odd going on, is there? The brakes aren't too fantastic on some of these old tractors. A lot of weight pushing us around here. I actually can see what the problem is the back weight look if I can make the tractor dance right there you go we should be much more settled I thought now no nope. that's better, lifted the weight right off the hitch if they touch that's when the problems start <laughs> right common traffic be good to us go 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 basically the problem on this corner is when there's traffic trying to make the turn that that one just did and even worse when they try to turn left coming out the end of here they just hit anything going the other way and that's it, everything stops hello quite nice in here the town itself but let's get on and sell this stuff because the clock is ticking let's see how much the price has come down whilst we were harvesting lovely view across the map from here I wonder where Altenstein is I think it's probably in Austria in the Tyrol Tyrol is a region that actually has a spans Austria Italy and Switzerland I believe or maybe even southern Germany um, those mountains there around the Alps 
I think we're there. We're in southern Italy. I'd play this map in seasons with a Tyrol Geo for sure. I think they match very well. Look, we've got thirty-two thousand dollars, euros, things. I'm just going to get the hats going now with this little Hassia Cedar. I'm going to leave him. I'm not going to do the edges of the field. This is such a small piece of equipment. He may be able to figure it out himself. Right, got past that guy quite nicely. Right, let's just see how he gets on. Now, we're just going to skip across here. Boing, boing. There you go. Oh, it's not planted. The Deutz, whilst fertilising over here, has shown us exactly what the problem is. It couldn't be clearer. <laughs> Uh, he's run out, he's just filling up up there. It's the fence for sure. I mean, yeah, it's here. It's so, okay, it's just something we need to bear in mind. And I did underestimate the, the price we've been paying for the fertilizer, actually. Um, the amount we got in the in Digestate has probably worth, saved us about $600, $700. But it's saving us time too, and that's sometimes even more important. I wanted to leave this area here just so I've got room to turn vehicles around and manoeuvre because I do try to be a bit careful on the crops even though I haven't got destruction on because I'm just too clumsy for that um, but once we've got that big field off Simon we shall review the situation and, and how we actually plough those fields in together or what layout we choose on might be better off to miss this fence by going up and down and then have an area at the end of here. Maybe that'll be silage, um, sorry, chaff corn, because we've got to do that manually anyway, so the collisions won't be an issue. Right. That's all the work this guy can do down here for now. Here we are back in the farmyard, and we're going to just pop the Massey into the workshop. We're going to take the forestry cage off. Why not? We paid for it as an extra, so that means we can take it off for no charge and as I say that saves us a thousand dollars we could put the sunshade on that would cost us a thousand we're just going to go standard it's a lovely day there you go open top tractoring hopefully we won't regret that right we now need to go and find a piece of machinery I don't know if you've actually even seen it yet because it is tucked away one of these sheds over here and it is the Massey Ferguson old time pack corn cutter to make silage from your corn it does have to get through the roof might not be the permanent home for him can we get him out okay <laughs> or is it so glitched into the roof that we can't oh no um, right, just a minute. We lower the header. Does that do anything at all? Come on. Yes. There's always a way in this game. I can raise the header. Can we get it over this wall? Look, oh, through the wall. Through, through the wall's fine. No. Right, turn. That way. Back him up that way. Now, go, 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 go. Go. And there we are. Like a true pro. Now we're folding back up. Getting around this tight section. Right. Now, I haven't cut silage for a long, long time. I don't usually do much of it on my maps, as you may have noticed. Um, certainly not in 17 when you, you can just dump grass in there previous versions of the game this was it wrapped bales or chopping corn right, I'm gonna go external here if you don't mind for a second just to get this guy hitched onto the wagon looks about right and away we go the hats and the little Hassia cedar seem to be doing okay they've left a little bit down the top of the field but that's all right so now we need to select the plant up, we need to unfold it. We need to lower it. Pipe out. 
turn on. I don't own this field. I <laughs> yeah, I own the field the crops in, mister. Right, where have I got to go? Oh, this is a little bit crazy. Am I okay there? Maybe I can come back the other way. Excuse me, at least we're just chaffing this. No one's going to eat this corn that I'm driving over. The one thing you do have to see, uh, keep an eye on, is that if you carry on harvesting when your trailer's full, you basically just lose the chaff. You'll carry on cutting it and it will just disappear into the ether of the farm simulator universe. If you turn the chopper off as you turn, you can get a bit faster to get in your turns done a little bit quicker. Can I get in here? Perfect, look at that. I've deliberately tried to leave these little channels, or will leave channels, so that I can get around these fields. That causing too much damage. I sent the doits um, up to the pasture outside the sheep to start harrowing it, but I can't because I haven't actually picked that grass up yet. The reason I've left that is because I wanted to see what we get out of this field um, before I decide what to do with that grass production. It may be baled and sold. It may be brought over and put in the bunker. Um, I'm just going to see. I've got options there. As I've said before, we're not wrapping any bales in this playthrough. There we go, perfect fit now. And I'm sure, if you actually pay attention, I'm getting a reasonably good width off of that cutter as well. The numbers sometimes, I've noticed with the small ploughs, small cultivators, um, they actually do a bit more work than the statistics suggest. Right, I'm just going to get on with this. Things are going very, very well. Right, we're just unloading the second bit of chaff in there. Um, that mistake I made where you carry on chaffing when your trailer's full, I may have actually made that. Um, so we've got 23,600 in there. I'm going to say we probably should have got about 27, 28,000 out of that field. Which for the time that took is quite a lot. It's 60,000 grass on those two other fields. We are going to pick that up with the boucher. I'm going to do that off camera and get that field up and wrapped. We're going to just have a little think about our plan certainly our plan for the money so let's just get this guy parked up put away the hassia cedar is empty already we actually need to get some bags of seed back up to the farm because we're not toing and throwing so i'm going to take a little break from recording do a little bit of back and forth admin which needs doing once or twice a day at least so far because we haven't got everything that i'm planning for us to have so We'll be back with you very shortly, but we're making very good progress um, and much earlier in the day than we were yesterday because we've spent no time waiting around for fields. We're just heading up to Simon's field, which is now ready to harvest. It's two times fertilised and ploughed. Um, there is a harvest mission if I hadn't parked the hats in the way. We're going to go ahead and we're going to buy that field now. And this field is the one we bought off of Peter yesterday. And this is ready to plant. We're going to plant corn in here. Oh, we missed a row, not to worry. We're going to plant one row in here. Off you go. Fantastic. And I think we're going to leave you there to, for today. We've got some more seeding and some more fertilising to do up here. Um, and we've got all that grass to pick up, which we're going to put in the silage bunker. For the longest time I thought these were rocks, they're actually some kind of haystack on a birch wood frame. That threw me for a long, long time. So thank you very much for watching everybody. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Feel free to comment, leave your suggestions, you know I always like them. And subscribe if you want to stay in touch. We'll be back soon.